A key diplomatic decision thousands of kilometers from the battlefield relating to the war in Gaza, an Arab-led draft resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire has failed at the U.N. Security Council, the organization's highest body for the maintenance of international peace and security. The result of the voting is as follows. 13 votes in favor, one vote against, one abstention. The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Council. Again, allows that the negative mass. vote that proved so crucial was from the U.S. ambassador. She said she has her own draft resolution for a ceasefire and that she'll bring that before the Security Council in the coming days. Journalist Sally Patterson is in New York and was watching the debate and the vote that took place, and she joins me now. So, Sally, walk us through what was in that draft resolution sponsored by Algeria on behalf of a bloc of Arab nations. And importantly, why was it defeated? Well, this was the eighth time that a resolution like this was brought in front of the Security Council since October 7th, looking at the situation in Gaza. Now, Algeria put forward this resolution with the hope of calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Algeria laid out requests that have been laid out many times before in that Security Council chamber. They said that they wanted all parties to comply with international humanitarian law. They reject the forced displacement of Palestinians living in the Strip, and they called for the immediate release of hostages, both Israeli and uh, foreign nationals, still trapped in the Strip as well. And they also pushed for the immediate implementation of medical aid, of food, of water, to be able to reach the civilians there who desperately need it. They said now was the time to act. They said it was time for the Security Council to stop sitting around in silence and actually take action when it comes to Gaza. Here's what Algeria had to say. This resolution is a stance for truth and humanity standing against the advocates for murder and hatred. A vote in favor of this draft resolution is a support to the Palestinians' right to life. Now the U.S. had already said before this meeting that they weren't going to support this draft resolution. We've seen this happen continuously over the past few months, with the U.S. saying the Security Council does need to act, but it needs to act in the right way. We heard from Linda Thomas-Greenfield, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., who basically said this resolution could actually be a spanner in the works when it comes to creating a lasting peace in the region. She said that talks have been ongoing for the several weeks now between U.S. President Joe Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, looking at securing a hostage deal and getting more aid into the Strip, pausing fighting for up to six weeks. Here's what she had to say. Demanding an immediate, unconditional ceasefire without an agreement requiring Hamas to release the hostages will not bring about a durable peace. Instead, it could extend the fighting between Hamas and Israel, extend the hostages' time in captivity, an experience described by former hostages as hell and extend the dire humanitarian crisis Palestinians are facing in Gaza. So no real surprise there that the U.S. did use its veto to stop that resolution from going through. The United Kingdom abstained and the rest of the members uh, voted in favour. But that resolution did not pass because the U.S. is a crucial member in that meeting to allow drafts like this to get through or not. OK, so the draft resolution, that has now been opposed by the U.S., but it does have its own that it wants to present. What's different about it? And, Sally, how likely is it to pass? 
Well, the US, as you say, has put forward a resolution of its own. We've seen that happen time and time again in the Security Council chamber. One member state will put forward its own resolution and another will basically counter it with what it says is a better draft, a better text to try and address the ongoing situation in Gaza. The US's text is actually relatively similar. It also calls for the release of hostages. It calls for an increase in humanitarian aid getting into the Strip and reaching those who desperately need it. We've seen more than a million people internally displaced and the number of people said to have been killed so far is around 30,000 according to Hamas figures as well. So the US is also calling for many of those things that we saw in Algeria's t uh, draft earlier. But what the US is stressing is that this doesn't need to be an immediate ceasefire. It says that might not be the most helpful thing to actually create sustainable uh, peace in the region. Instead, it wants a ceasefire as soon as is possible and practical to be able to do so. And the US also wanted to stress that Hamas's atrocities on October 7th, when more than 1,200 Israelis and foreign nationals were killed after a surprise attack, needed to be explicitly mentioned in that resolution. She said uh, that addressing that, recognizing what happened, including the sexual violence that took place on that day is important to recognize and important to make sure doesn't happen again. We heard that language mirrored by the Israeli ambassador to the UN as well, who said if we don't address it head on, then it gives a green light for other terrorists around the world to commit similar acts. We heard strong condemnation though after the vote uh, when the uh, resolution was not adopted by both China and by Russia as well. Both of them have been strong uh, critics of Israel and of the US in the Security Council chamber, and they both expressed disappointment that the resolution hadn't passed. We don't know exactly when the US is going to table its own resolution, but it's likely that there will be strong opposition within that chamber when it does get put in front of them.